Welcome back, everyone, to the 10th episode of the Demetria Obalor Show. And this time, I wanted to switch things up a bit. How about you get to know your host for once, yeah? So I reached out to all of you on my social media channels asking you to ask me questions. Yes, that's right. The 10th episode is going to be a Q&A Get to Know Demetria episode, and it's going to be fun. I mean, you guys responded with seriously hundreds of questions. We will not be getting to all of these today, but honestly, I, I'm really excited. So we're going to dig in and it's going to be very, very random because I uh, printed out all of the questions and put it in this really cute trifle dish. So make sure you go on YouTube because it's going to be just like me drawing it out of this cute plastic wannabe glass dish and checking out all of your fun questions. All right. So bear with me as we begin. And for those of you who've been saying, Demetria, make your episodes longer while well, you got your wish today because this episode is going to be longer. All right, let's dig right into these. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. All my podcast listeners, bear with me here as I ruffle through this dish of questions. Do you want kids? And if so, how many dogs is too many? What? Okay, hold on. Yes, I definitely want kids. I don't want them at this moment, but I come from a really big family and so I love kids. I'm a big kid myself and I'm around kids. Like I'm just like on a thousand. If you need your kids to kill some energy, like send them to me, I know what to do with them. And dogs, it's so funny because I love dogs. I love dogs so much. I know so much about dogs, and I don't know if it's because my name starts with a D, but I would always grab the D encyclopedia in school, go to the dog section, and then just look at all of the different breeds of dogs. And so some of my favorites, Rottweiler, I love Cane Corso, but our first dog, my family's dog, was a Boston Terrier mixed with a poodle, so we called him a bossy poo. And he was the sweetest, best, well-rounded, oh, kid-friendly dog ever. We miss him. Um, he was with us for 17 years. And now my family has like a Shih Tzu, Poodle, Lapso, Apso mix that um, we rescued. And her name is Molly and she's a little sweetheart. She's definitely more frou-frou than our last dog, but we love her all the same. I don't think you can have too many dogs. I absolutely love dogs. When I was a kid, I wanted to have a sanctuary of dogs. And so I, I wanted to rescue all the dogs. I wanted to have a hundred dogs. I really do love dogs if you're getting the point. All right, next question. From Frank Nitty 100, what's your favorite fragrance for yourself and favorite on a man? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> I'm a Baccarat girl, okay? I've been wearing Baccarat since it first came out. That was like 2015, 2016. I remember buying it at Neiman Marcus. I'm like, oh my God, this is it. But it's not the only fragrance that I love, but I would definitely say that's like a staple and I've bought it many, 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 many times. And I don't see myself stopping because I feel like... I haven't found anything that really truly tops it yet. But I love this one by Amouage called Guidance. I've been wearing that. I've been getting a lot of compliments on that as well. Some other favorites of mine, D&G, L'Imperatrice. I just reordered that. It's a nice eau de toilette, very fresh, fruity. Just, it's, it's beautiful and it's so clean. It's gorgeous. It's not offensive. Everybody would like it. I have a lot of fragrance though. <laughs> I do, but let's go to the men. Otherwise we'll be here all day. You know, Aventus Creed, it's a classic and it always hits me. But honestly, just as a man, if you smell good, I am not complaining. Blue de Chanel. I just bought something for one of my brothers. It was the Millionaire Royal fragrance. I was at Macy's and I was like, oh, he would love this. And so I, I got him that. I like Aqua Di Gio. I'm going to tell you right now, if you smell good, you smell good. It's not so much about the brand. All right, next question from the novelist Dario. What troubles you most in life? Oh man, that's a that's a good question. Um, I would say I I am a little impatient when it comes to my career. I've worked very very hard over the past decade, and I take it really seriously. And you know, I'm out here in the trenches, you know, getting it from the mud. And so, you know, but you gotta wait. I, it's funny. One of my middle names is Ogechi. Okay, it's an Igbo Nigerian name. I have two middle names. I'm only going to tell you one right now. And this is Ogechi, and it means in God's time. I know not everybody believes in God, and that's fine. I'm not here to convert you. I'm not the most religious person myself, but it always reminds me that even if I'm not getting what I want when I want it, like it, it is coming. It's just not in my time. It's in God's time. And, it, and it's a really important reminder for me. And just to see what kind of person I've become, who I've always been, you know, always looking for the next thing, working, 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 working. And it's like, no, you know, the flower grows slowly. The produce grows slowly, and so I plant the seeds, and in God's time, they will grow. And that's that's something that I always struggle with, but I am working on um, because I want to enjoy the journey. And when you're so focused on where you want to be, sometimes you don't appreciate where you are and the people around you. And that's something, you know, when I when I go walk the dog with my mom or something like that, I always look at her and I'm just like, wow, I love my mom so much. And I feel like I never want to take that for granted because you could have everything that you want in the world, but it's like the people that you love the most 
what if they're not there? And one day things are going to be a lot different. And I just, you know, I'm about to cry. Oh my God. I'm like, you start talking about my mom. I start, I can't even talk about my mom. I start crying. I love my mom so much. I'm definitely a mommy's girl. Okay. Hold on. Let me get it together. Let me get it together. Um, next question. Did you beat Donkey Kong Country? For those of you who don't know what this is in reference to, I recently posted a video of me playing Donkey Kong Country on my old Super Nintendo from like 25, 26 years ago from when I was a kid. I also posted a fun throwback picture with a couple of my brothers. One of them wasn't born yet. And we were playing one of my favorite consoles of all time, Super Nintendo. And no, I have never beat Donkey Kong Country. The level that they saw me on was this level with mining or whatever. You're in this mining car. And that was a tough level to beat when I was a kid, but we we beat that. I think my last saved level was on the mountain on the snow top. And I haven't beat that one yet. And that's where I stopped. But I got really, really far because we kept playing. We kept playing. We kept playing. Once, if you keep playing long enough, you're going to get good at it. Okay. <laughs> this person asks, are you single? Yes. I am single. <laughs> and since they didn't ask any follow-up question, we'll, 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 we'll move on. We'll move on. Okay. So here's another one. Uh, what were some of your favorite shows growing up? This is from the Joseph boy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. I loved Are You Afraid of the Dark on Nickelodeon. I have this really funny memory though, because I feel like Dragon Ball Z and Are You Afraid of the Dark came on at the same time. So that's Nickelodeon versus Cartoon Network. And my brothers love Dragon Ball Z. So sometimes we'd be over at our grandma's house or something. And my brother's if they got to the TV, we were watching Dragon Ball Z. So I started hating Dragon Ball Z, although it's a really good show, but I hated it because I wanted to watch what I wanted to watch. And that was Are You Afraid of the Dark? But I'm a 90s kid. We watched Hey Arnold. We watched SpongeBob. We, what about Happily Ever uh, After Fairy Tales on HBO? Do you guys remember that? One Saturday morning, you know, there was this mummy show. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was this mummy show. It would come on right before we came to school and I loved it. They, they were all like mummies, like ancient pharaoh mummies or something like that. So that was kind of cool. Let's Let's see, another question. What's your favorite genre of music and movies? Okay, so with music, I have really broad tastes. I mean, my family is very diverse, and then I grew up in the Midwest, and when you grow up in the Midwest, I feel like you have to stay on top of all your music, because it's not like you're in LA, where they're making lots of music, or NY, where you're getting all this great hip-hop, or anything like that. So, I mean, we, we get a taste of everything, and I feel like our radio DJs were so good at that. So. You know, I mean, we listened to the Jay-Z. We listened to what was happening in the South. We listened to all sorts of R&B coming from across the country. Rock music, too. And I love rock music. In high school, oh, my God. That, to me, was a really great time for modern rock and roll. Um, it was a lot of emo-type stuff. You know, a lot of mainstream-type rock. But, I mean, some of my favorite bands from back then, I mean, that's like Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, The Killers. But some of my favorite classic rock, I mean, that's Led Zeppelin, that's Pink Floyd, that's The Cure. And a lot of that influence comes from my mom, but... I really love Afrobeats too. I grew up on them. Hello, my dad's Nigerian. And um, so I appreciate that kind of music. Um, the only thing that I'm probably really lacking is maybe get some country music. I mean, I love Dolly Parton. I, I mean, Elvis Presley is not country, but some of the songs feel like they could be. I like some modern stuff like Luke Bryan, but I think for the most part, you're going to see a lot of hip hop. You're going to see, oh, a lot of queen <laughs> on my iPod shuffle. You're going to see all that kind of stuff. When it comes to movies, I always say gangster movies and horror flicks. I love dramas. I appreciate comedies, but I usually pick a drama over a comedy, but I love my, my, my godfather. I'm telling you, I got to Miami one day and I should have been on the beach, but I saw this godfather trilogy happening and they just kept playing it. So I just stayed in bed all day and I was watching godfather one through three. I love casino. I love my scary movies. Okay. I mean, I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love, I mean, I love everything. The first insidious, I, 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 I just do. I just like being scared. I don't know where that came from. I mean, I, I really like scary movies. I really liked Hereditary. There's so many movies though. We could be here all day. I love Jurassic Park too. I mean, that I know the, that doesn't really fit any of those, but Jurassic Park's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love this question from, I guess his name is Black Jesus. He asked me, are you happy in this modern world? And it made me smile because immediately I knew where that lyric was from. Are you happy in this modern world? Uh, yeah, hello, that's from A Star Is Born. It's the guy's part, but I do the girl's part. I'm falling in all the good times. I find myself longing. Okay, anyway, anyway next question. Uh, who was the last person you met that gave you butterflies? Oh, that's cute. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, then it was definitely this guy that was very thoughtful, very charming. That's definitely very attractive to me. And um, 
I remember I was in Dallas and I was on my way to Miami for my birthday and one of my friends, you know, we kind of got into it and she wasn't picking me up from the airport or she was, but I didn't want her to because uh, she just said something that rubbed me the wrong way. And he asked me what was wrong. I told him and he was like, oh, please don't go with her. Like, I'm going to send you a car. And so he sent me this private car to the airport. And I just thought that was so sweet. But it was just so thoughtful that he instantly thought of a solution. And it's probably one of my favorite things that anyone's ever done for me. And it took a while. When I when you say butterflies, it's not like I see somebody for the first time and they just give me butterflies. It, it's it's chemistry and it's something that's developed over time. And it's it's um it's just it's just something that clicks. It's something that clicks. And, and he, he did a lot of things that clicked for sure. But um <laughs> we won't get into that. Or actually, let's take a video question because I was so happy that some of you guys responded with video questions because that's what I wanted. So here's one right now. Hey, Demetria, happy 10th episode of the podcast. I've been listening and actually watching since episode one. I'm actually a college student here at the University of North Texas. My name is Justin Walters, and I am actually a converged broadcast media major over here. So I think you and I can kind of relate to this question. What do you think about the consolidation of television and radio stations? You know, like hundreds of groups being turned into like three or four major groups. You know, television, you have Sinclair, Nexstar, and radio, you have like iHeart, Town Square, Alpha. When you have all of these stations under just one umbrella, I feel like there could be dangers to it. I mean, we did see it with Sinclair several years ago when they issued a huge message across all of their different news channels. And it was it was really, really insane. And so it's just like, you want to gain the trust of the public. And unfortunately, over the past few years, there's been a distrust of the mainstream media. It could be very difficult if the stations aren't ran appropriately. If they're ran with hidden agendas, politicized agendas, that's that's not real news. It's not real news that people are expecting, especially when you're talking about a local level. When it comes to the cable channels, things can be a little bit different. But if you're going to use anchors as your minions to spread political propaganda, I mean, that's, that's not good. That's never a good thing, unless the anchors are just saying, hey, this is my commentary. This is what I personally believe, not the views of the station, et cetera, et cetera. You know how that goes. But great question, Justin. Steady hard. Stay at school. June 94 Stone says, why haven't a man chose you yet? Why haven't he made you a wife? I'm like, hold on. Can I do some choosing too? Is it just on the men to choose? Because I know that I've been chosen many times, but were they the right ones for me? And I feel like you have to be careful asking this question because a woman's value is not based solely on the man that she's standing next to. My name speaks for itself. And that's something that's very important to me. There are plenty of people that I could be pictured next to, being next to, relationship publicized, but it was very important to me as a professional woman that when you Google my name, <laughs> It pulls up Demetria Obalor. And um, so a lot of people don't know if I'm in a relationship or what I'm doing or this or that and the other. And that is definitely intentional. That's that's certainly intentional because it's very important for me to have my individual identity. And I think a lot of people are caught up in this antiquated idea that, oh, a woman is nothing without a man. And that's not true. There's some women who don't desire relationships. I am not one of those people. Right. But I haven't found the right person yet. And I know many people who would be more than happy to take me. But I, I just I, I don't I don't feel the same way. And it's happened many times. Um, I just haven't met the right one. I mean, there's billions of people in the world. I mean, I just haven't met the right one yet. And it's really as simple as that. But there's nothing wrong with somebody just because they're not with a man. Why hasn't a man chose you? I, I don't know. Why haven't I chose that guy yet? You know what I mean? It's more like that. Because I haven't met somebody who has all of the characteristics that I want yet. Or maybe they're not the person that they're supposed to be yet. Or maybe I'm not. But I, I just don't like the way this was framed. I don't want to believe that you meant any harm by it. But unfortunately, it's something that a lot of women, especially career women, have to deal with. Because it's like, you're not seen with the man, so oh, I'm undesirable all of a sudden. No, I don't have these gigantic flaws. I'm a very loving, caring, nice person. I'm not some dominatrix and I'm just crazy. No, it that you know what I mean? So it's just, this is a loaded question. So just be careful with that. Okay, next question. Ooh, Lark Brinkley, what's your go-to section in the bookstore or favorite subject to read about? I just recently read a book called The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein, which was really amazing. And I really like nonfiction these days. I like to use it in my work setting as a television journalist and host. 
um, when contextualizing information. And, you know, I like to sound smart. Okay. I like to be smart even more so, right? And so you have to absorb that knowledge. And my interests are vast. And you can see that in my podcast, whether it be tech, politics, social issues, pop culture, music, movies, whatever it is. I like to know my facts about a lot of that. And um, you, you can only get that by by reading. I know a lot of people like to watch YouTube videos. I prefer reading. I prefer the article version. I, lo- I really do love to read and I need to read more. The next book that I want to get through because I never really truly got through in school and I didn't make my way through it in the pandemic was Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs, and Steel. It's an anthropological book, which I love. And it just explains why things are the way that they are. I, I love it. Just just give me the facts like school. Just give me give me the facts. Let's let's dig in deep and give me those nuggets. I need them. But I do love fiction. I, I love um, Wuthering Heights. Okay. Okay. Bronte girl over here. Loved it. Love Heathcliff. Oh my guy. WD Martin Jr. wants to know my favorite fighting game. Looks like we got a lot of gamers in the audience and listening and all that. Um, okay. My favorite fighting game would probably have to be Mortal Kombat. And, uh, and if you guys have been following me for a long time, I mean, you know, I dressed up as Princess Katana and Melina. Yeah. Mortal Kombat. I love the fatalities, the brutalities. Um, finish him. I love that. I love the first original movie. Thought it was amazing. Still watch it to this day. Always up to watch that one. Let's see. New new 116 asks, a food question saying outside of the pineapple upside down cake and barbecue chicken salad what else do you like okay this is in reference to the cheesecake factory menu other things that i like oh you want to get specific okay i like the factory combinations i like steak diane with the salmon i also like um there's this jamaican shrimp I also like that too. I just went to Grand Lux, which is kind of like a sister restaurant of Cheesecake Factory. And I like the salmon three ways there. I also like um, the Asian nachos. Those are really good. They caught me off guard because Asian nachos, that sounds wild, but they were actually really, really good. So you should try that out at Grand Lux. Let's take another video question. And this time I understand it's from one of my Kansas City people. Demetria, what's popping? It's Dank Nitty from Kansas City. I love what you're doing. Would you ever consider doing an all women's sports podcast with like you, Stat Baby from It Is What It Is, and Joy Taylor from Speak? Let me know what's happening. Like, what's good, man? How are you doing? Kansas City, you know, that's the hometown. Yeah, Stat Baby, Joy Taylor, they're holding it down in the sports world. I love what they do. So, oh yeah, girl power all the way. I would certainly be down for that. So, if they'll have me. <laughs> And it's crazy. I wanted to come out to Kansas City just this past Halloween so I could go to the Beast, Edge of Hell, go get my barbecue fix over at Jack Stack, you know, some Gates, LCs, if it's still open, at least I'll get the barbecue sauce from the store. But love my Kansas City people. Thank you so much for showing love. Okay, this is AG Boating. And they say, Queen, I need hair product info for my mixed daughters. I can't handle long, thick, dry hair. Help, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me help you out, okay? So one of my Holy Grail products, my mom used it on me when I I was a little girl and I went back to it as an adult because it's it detangles hair really well, especially if you live in a humid climate and it just makes that brush go through a whole lot easier. So Humectris by Nexus, if you go to Sam's Club, you can pay $20 and get a huge liter of it. Okay. And, and I'm using it. And sometimes they have it on sale. They'll have it for like $16 or something like that. But I would definitely get it at Sam's Club to tangle their hair starting from the bottom. I use a wet brush, okay? I don't I don't brush my hair outside of the shower like that when I'm detangling it. Only when it's detangled do I brush my hair dry because it'll just break it off. In the shower, I'll start at the very bottom, the ends, and work my way up slowly in sections. And that conditioner will help big time. And then get yourself a good leave-in conditioner. If you go to Target, uh, Miel has some. There, there are lots of different brands, but I'm gonna tell you it starts with that conditioner because you could even leave that conditioner in their hair. Get some good eco gel, some olive oil, oil gel. They sell that at Target too or any of the beauty supplies. Slick their hair back if that's what they want. But I'm going to tell you that Humectris is your friend. I use it all the time. Get that. It's it. You need to get that. Next question. I would like to ask you, how do you maintain your body so toned and beautiful? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I work really hard on it. I have a gym vlog that I just loaded up on YouTube a couple of weeks back. And for me, you know, I used to be a lot slimmer. When I was in high school, I ran cross country and I maintained that kind of running when I was in college until I got diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. And then after that, I gained weight. I mean, my metabolism was all over the place. So I started lifting heavy weight. And then I feel like, you know, just me being in competition with myself, you know, trying to see if I can squat 225 went well beyond that. Then I started gaining all sorts muscle because I'm doing all these, you know, shoulder presses, all this stuff. And I gain muscle really quick. I mean, I get buff. Like, I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm, t- I, I'm strong. We're strong over here. Okay. So the thing is, is <laughs> 
The thing is, is this, I feel like cardio is your friend and I, it, it can be really difficult. The poison I choose is the Stairmaster and I, I'll be on that thing for an hour and I'll really, really, really push myself. And I just feel like that's really important. Diet is really important too. You can't outwork a bad diet. When I really started to see a difference is when I started to curtail my diet a little bit more and then add cardio because if you're just building muscle all day long, lifting heavy, I mean, and you haven't gotten that fat off, that's when your arms start to look bulkier. That's when other things start to look bulkier and you're hiding the results, the hard earned results that you have. So I think that's really important. I, me, I'm focused on cardio and diet and I could be stricter with it too, but you know, we'll get there. We'll get there for sure. But thank you so much for the compliment and best of luck on your fitness journey. I think that Moderate weightlifting is helpful, but I think that cardio, if you want to lose fat and you really want to see the muscle that you have, because I'm going to tell you, you start doing heavy lifting and if you have a lot of fat on you, it's just going to make you bigger. And I don't know, you know, I mean, it's just kind of a complicated thing. Read him Hutt wants to know how much of a conspiracy theorist am I? What, what do I question? <laughs> I question what's in a lot of these supplements, okay? I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I think these are just facts that the supplement industry obviously is not regulated by the FDA. First and foremost, that is a fact. And I think it's really interesting how a lot of these unchecked products are even in existence on our market. I covered this when I was in freaking college. I remember when Dr. Oz would sit there and endorse raspberry ketones. There was no link to it helping with weight loss whatsoever. And so people are making millions of dollars on this holy grail product that that isn't even proven to work. I remember there was a um, weight loss product that was on the market that was really successful, but it was causing people liver damage, fatty liver, all of these kinds of things, and, and could cause irreversible damage to your health. And the FDA, I feel like, needs to step in, and I think that they need to hold these people accountable. There are a lot of influencers who market products that may not be safe for you. You don't know what's in them. I want to know why the FDA is not being held accountable or doing more to police the products that are unsafe, that are flooding our social media channels. I am not somebody who believes the world is flat. I am not that kind of conspiracy theorist, although, you know, the Loch Ness Monster could possibly be real. I feel like UFOs at this point are pretty much proven to be real, especially somebody who has hyperthyroidism. I remember I would go to GNC a lot, and I'm not saying GNC is a bad place, but there was a fat burner product that I would take, and I didn't realize that I was undiagnosed hyperthyroid at the time, and I didn't realize how much caffeine was in there, so it was jacking up my already high heart rate, and I, I could have died. I know that it helped me get into a thyroid storm, and that's something that you can have a heart attack and die from, and it's like, I just thought I was taking a, a weight loss product. I thought I was doing something. It just gives you hella energy. That's what a fat burner does. And uh, to this day, like, I mean, I, I stay away from caffeine. I didn't even know I had that condition, but a lot of people don't know that they have things that they do have. And so you're taking stuff and you're not realizing the negative impact. And I feel like the FDA, it's their job to step in and protect us. And I just think they're doing a terrible job at that. And I've talked about that in previous episodes as well. When it comes to um, sugar-free products, products with erythritol in them, that's something I take very seriously. If I see that on a label, I do not drink it because there are studies that are linking erythritol, this sugar-free sweetener, to things like heart disease. Yeah, and, I, and we don't we don't need that. So I talked about it on my podcast in an earlier episode, so just check that out. I, I let you know. I go dig deep on that. Mister Mista eight seventy. What motivated you to add more limbs to your business tree? Oh, I like that question. I like how you phrase that. Well. Why not? <laughs> That's my question. Like, I, why not? I feel like if I'm good at something, I'm like, oh, I'd like to do that too. To me, I don't feel like any door has to be closed. And if it's something that I want to do, like even maybe in my 40s, I might want to go to law school. It's something that's in my mind. I, if, if I want to do it, I'll do it. I'm that kind of determined person. And if the door's closed, I will break it down. That's how I feel. I don't know how long it's going to take me, once again, in God's time, like my middle name, but I'm going to get there. And if I want to do it, nobody's going to tell me I can't. And that is the Aries, Demetria, Nigerian, Polish, German in me, whatever you want to call it. But we don't take no for an answer. Caspool wants to know my top 10 anime. Okay, I don't think I have 10 because I don't watch anime as much. You need to talk to one of my brothers. Now, he is the anime king. Whenever I click on his Hulu or Netflix, I mean, just seriously, his to watch list is all anime. And, uh, but I did watch anime growing up and I, I really loved Case Closed. One of my favorite movies is Spirited Away. I also watched Death Note, which was great, but I felt like toward the end, it started getting a little bit repetitive for me. So I stopped watching it, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. But I want to go back and watch Castlevania. I, I really would like to see Castlevania. I love the story of Dracula, the romance, all of this dark romance. So I'd probably check that out for sure. All right. Uh, Mr. Nelson wants to know if I ever would go skydiving. Oh my gosh. Now I love trying new things. I am definitely 
definitely that person. I am always down, but this, I just feel like you're testing the limits. It's like you're looking at God and saying, I'm going to roll the dice. And I'm just like, I try not to do things where if something happened to me, people would be like, well, what did you expect? And this seems like one of those things. I want my sympathy when I die. (laughs) I don't want them to be like, well, she took it for granted. Why was she diving out of the sky? But I heard it's amazing. Although I did a deep dive on Reddit about the skydiving community a while back because I'm weird like that. And I look up random things all the time. And this one was interesting because a lot of people who are really into that skydiving society, they lose a lot of friends because people die, even really experienced ones. You still haven't been in New York or did you finally make it here? Fuego 570 wants to know. So I haven't been to New York yet. Um, I don't know if this is more of like a New York or like a Jersey accent, but I do have plans to go to New York. I'm going to go to New York, guys. Yeah, I want to go to Coney Islands. I want to get a slice of pizza. I want to see if it's better than what they have in Chicago with the deep dish because I tried the Luminati's in Chicago and it was okay, but you know, that big piece of sausage in there, I was not expecting that. But um, also I want to go to Central Park. Somebody needs to take me there. I want to get on the subway. I want to see all of it. Another question, how do you stay so grounded in reality when your star is ascending higher, miss? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I appreciate that because I feel like, you know, when you're in the grind of it all, like sometimes you don't realize how far you've come. It's a work in progress. This is my life's work. I mean, opening doors that were never open for me. I don't have family in the business that I'm in. And so I'm getting it from the mud, like little baby would say. So thank you so much. But I am just a regular person. I'm a nice person. I mean, I live a regular life. Like I went to college, like I grew up with friends, you know, I'm not somebody who's just been so far removed from real life like that's not me and so I'll always be grounded in that I have a very loving family but it's it's just who I am and I'm a very nice person and you approach me with kindness I I give you kindness back you approach me with disrespect that Kansas City side comes out so watch that oh I like this one just checking the details of our first date well I'm not exactly sure what you mean here but I'm guessing Oh, okay. I think they, okay. I think I get the joke now, but okay. So I'll, I will kind of answer this in a different kind of way though. Like what my ideal first date would be, for example. And I think it would be something thrilling, not skydiving, but something like Dave and Buster's, which I love so much. My favorite games at Dave and Buster's are like air hockey. I love the, the basketball game. I love uh, DDR dance, dance revolution. I will kick your ass in that. And the Jurassic park shooting game. Those are my must games when I'm there. Like I love the stuffed animals. Please win me a stuffed animal but those are the games where I'm like, that's where I'm at. I'm playing at least five games of DDR, just so you know. <laughs> well, this is a fun one. Can we just enjoy our 30s and not be stressed out till we hit 40? Charles D. Branch wants to know. Hell yeah, we can. We're millennials, baby. We're forever kids. We have the best TV shows. We have the best movies, the best snack food. We're the generation of Gogurt and toaster strudels and dino chicken nuggets and all of that. Our Happy Meal toys were the best Happy Meal toys. We're the generation where we had great toys in our cereal boxes. I'm just saying, we have the best video game commercials. We had Toys R Us. We have the best toys. We have the best video game consoles when they came out, all of this stuff. Yes, we are forever children, okay? And I feel like that's why me, one of my favorite date places is Dave and Buster's. I'm like, why is it that I love this so much? Adults are supposed to be dry and boring, but not not us. Okay, let's see. We're down to like the last two. Okay, this is fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. And I'm sorry if I missed some of your questions because I had already answered them, but my camera just gave out on me. I did not know that was a feature of the Sony a6500. What the hell? How long should a good night last? Marcos Javier 24 wants to know. Oh my God, it could be 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, forever. I feel like you could do anything. You go to dinner, um, you could go to Dave and Buster's, then you could go to the park, especially if you live in a place like the Pacific Northwest, the East Coast. I mean, even the South, beautiful greenery, lush greenery in Vegas or, or the desert, Arizona, you could go to a canyon if you trust these people, of course, because those can be really secluded areas with no good phone service. So always go somewhere where you can escape, especially if you're, you know, first getting to know somebody or don't go at all. <laughs> um, but in Vegas, there's so many places you could, I mean, you could stay out all night and it would feel right. You could stay out all night and next morning and afternoon. I'm telling you, 48 hours is a real thing in Vegas. I mean, there used to be 24 hour bowling. I mean, you could, there, there's so many places you could go to out here. You could walk the strip. There's food that's open. There's good food that stays laid open here. I mean, you could get Vietnamese food, get some good pho. You could get some good ramen out here late at night. Sushi stays open late. Bars stay open late. There's a tiki bar that is literally open 24 seven and it's amazing. It's called the Golden Tiki. Check it out if you're in Vegas, but make a reservation because it's become really popular from when I used to go. And the drinks are so much fun. They're all tiki themed, fun stuff. They've got Dole Whip if you're interested in that and you're a Disney person. But it's so much fun. So you got to... 
you gotta, you, you know, if you're having fun on a date, I feel like it never ends. Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's so much fun. If you can find that in somebody and you have a great 24 hours with them, I mean, you're definitely off to a great start. All right. Now for our final question. Okay, we've made it. Okay, the sun is down. I've been at this for a while, guys. Last question. Can you add a little mental health bit to your podcast? Yes, yes. And you know, I'm so happy that you said this because I was just finding, trying to recruit a therapist for the show because I like to give credible opinions about things. And I was already thinking of getting one to talk about some of the dating mishaps we've all experienced, the ghosting, the breadcrumbing, the hovering, all of these things that, all of these terms that we use to describe people who really probably aren't that interested in us, all of this kind of stuff, but or just aren't emotionally available or whatever. But yeah, I, I would love to get an expert opinion on that. And then I would also love to um, get someone to speak about mental health stuff. I think that could be beneficial to everybody and just kind of give an expert opinion about these things. It's really important to get credible opinions because these days everybody's a TikTok doctor. And just because you read some lines on WebMD doesn't mean you know what the hell you're talking about. And wow, okay, we did it. All the questions, wow. I want to clean that up. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I just had to do that. I was going to buy some confetti. I don't know why. But 10th episode. Cheers. Hurrah. Huzzah. All of that good stuff. Uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really wanted to do this Q&A because a lot of you have asked for it. Thank you so much for your support for these past 10 episodes. And hey, be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube at the Demetra Obelor. I'm going to have a lot more fun video content that you're going to want to check out. I have ordered the Hot Ones 22 box from Heatness. So that means, yes, I will be doing my own Hot Ones challenge. And now that I've said it on this podcast, I have fully committed to it. Okay, I can't punk out now. And I think that'll be really fun to watch and I'll edit it up and, you know, show you guys all the fun clips and stuff. So until then, I'll keep you posted about that, but you will see me back here next Thursday. Until then, have an amazing, safe, wonderful weekend.